Hi, I'm Russ with ESBService.com and today I'm going to give you some pointers on identifying your ballast and ballast performance tips. First, what I'd like to describe is the fact that ESB has used several ballasts over the years. Starting in the late 90s, roughly 97, 98, they started using a ballast that looked like this. This was the first 10-pin uh, ballast, if you will. You had 10 electrical pins on this end, and um, a lot of these actually, you'll see, I'm going to go through the evolution of the ballast here, a lot of them look very similar, but they do have things that are different about them. And Basically, I just wanted to show that all these ballasts are the same and they interchange just fine, although they do have slight differences. The main thing is on this type of a ballast is that we have 10 electrical pins here. You see on this first version here, there are transistors in the center here. Uh, we have, um, there's resistors and capacitors tied up in the air here, bridging these two and um, the inductors are just like this blackish kind of color. Now on this next version, a couple years later, you see the inductors are just, uh, they're a little yellow right now. You still have the uh, components suspended up on the uh, transistors like that. Again, these are the same ballast. Nothing to get excited about about these changes that you see year to year. Here's the same ballast, uh, um, a little newer, and you see uh, the heat sinks here have some bent shape to it and they don't have the components strewn across the top anymore. Actually the uh, resistor and capacitor are down here on the board now. These are just slight revisions that you see. Um, here you see the same ballast as here, but this bottom section here where you have the six capacitors and the two transistors, it's just simply rotated 90 degrees but the rest of it resembles the same. Again, this is the same ballast here. A newer version of this ballast has um, these capacitors look like, like they're a little smaller in diameter and they're green instead of black. And now the heat sinks, um, the fins are uh, straight. Uh, and also they've added a lock on here, which um, this could be cut off, this could be removed. Um, no matter what, when you're using a ballast that has the, uh, has the lock on there, just pull it back and put your connector on there as you normally would. Um, like, like here, let me show you on this one here. You would take this ballast and when you replace it, you would put it in the same spot. Don't move your connector around. Um, this is still how you would connect it for replacement in the same position. Um, what I'm trying to say here is that if your lock looks like it goes the other way, you do not take and spin the ballast around and connect it this way. So that's the only difference really on a setup like that. Now, um, this is a, even a newer style right here where um, it looks pretty identical to here. It doesn't have the markings on the uh, inductors. The capacitors look a little thicker. You still have the straight fins on the heat sink here. Again, all of these are pretty much the same ballast, electrical equivalent. Um, they, they will all interchange and I see no, uh, no problem in doing so. All of these ballasts have um, jumper wires in the, in the corner here by the fuse in the 10-pin connector, and that is your voltage selector. Uh, intact, this jumper would be, uh, this would be set for 120 volts, and uh, cut and removed completely like this one would be 240 volts. You would see that uh, um, there's actually a red mark here from the factory. And from factory, they would mark those red to kind of jump out and catch your attention so you, that you see it's a 240 volt. Now, um, sometimes those are marked J1, sometimes they're marked um, J2, like in this ballast here. But the important thing is that it's in the very corner, in this spot on the board. So this is the basic evolution of 10-pin ballasts from the late 90s up until uh, you know the current version and again these are all um, electrical equivalents. There is a version of this ballast this one here is basically the same as two of these 10 pin ballasts just made it together. 
This ballast was used, this was starting in um, around the 2003-2004 era. You might see it on 2005 beds, uh, typically only on 20 lamp models, but you might see it on 16 lamp and um, other you know, variations as well. But basically this is the electrical equivalent of having two ballasts side by side. You have your two connectors um, to go out and power um, your lamps. This ballast here, this four lamp version of this ballast actually was discontinued in um, I want to say uh, late 2000s, 2007 uh, era around there and uh, so if you have a ballast like this uh, certain models you could use uh, two of the 10 pin ballast in place of it or you would retrofit um, the RT ballast in its place. So, um, speaking of the RT ballast, this is what ESB had converted to in the 2003-2004 era. This is what an RT ballast looks like. Basically, it's about 18 inches long and it's got a metal case and it's fully enclosed all the way around and it's got its own wires attached to it. Uh, RT ballast might say uh, workhorse on there and it might even say um, Sun Horse on there. A Workhorse 8 would be a um, it would be a 3 lamp or a 2 lamp version and a Workhorse 7 would be a 2 lamp version. Um, you could wire them for uh, like you could even do a, a, a 6 lamp version of this or a 4 lamp of the uh, Workhorse 7. A Sun Horse would be a 4 lamp which would be about twice as wide as this one. All these RT ballasts um, superseded all the 10 pin ballasts um, thoroughly in uh, 2004. That was the last year that ESB used those and to this day um, they use um, ballasts like this. The RT ballasts are not jumper selectable as far as the voltage goes. Like this one here is 120 volt and this is 120 volt only. Now this is what the same ballast looks like but this would be a 230 volt. It still says workhorse 8 on it, but then you see the voltage here, um, WH8230. That's the voltage indication there. So um, there, are, there are other versions of this ballast, like I said, because um, you're going to have 240 volt, 120 volt, 2 lamp, 3 lamp, and 4 lamp versions. Um, even, uh, like I said, um, even 6 lamp versions. But basically they all look like this. This ballast, when it fails, the RT ballast, it fails. It has a very low failure rate, but it would, uh, it would basically, what I'm trying to say is the lamp just would not light up. You move the lamp to another slot, it lights okay. You move it into a slot that has the RT ballast and it's not going to light. You can also verify that you're getting power to the black and white wires. If you're getting power here and it's not illuminating the lamp, then you have a bad ballast. As opposed to the 10 pin, ba 10 pin ballast, you can have um, several different issues, such as uh, this ballast here, the 10 pin ballast, can be half blown. Normally, this drives two lamps, but you can have it where only one lamp is lit, or of course, if it's completely blown, you have where um, two lamps are not lit. This ballast here is sensitive to voltage swings. Uh, it's recommended to uh, work on um, 120. Uh, um, it should be 110 to 120. Uh, no higher, no less than that. Outside of that range, it can blow. Um, on the um, 200, and it should be, on, if you have the jumper cut basically, it should be between 220 and 230. Higher than that, lower than that, it can blow. It's also susceptible to um, open circuits and short circuits. The RT ballast, on the other hand, is not as uh, sensitive, it's a lot more robust. This is actually an instant start ballast and this can handle more of a voltage swing and uh, this also has open and short circuit protection built into it. This is a very reliable ballast and um, has been for, for many years and uh, this one uh, is, is definitely showing its age and is susceptible to uh, different failures. The ballast is also susceptible to voltage swings in the form of, say, like a power surge, uh, lightning storm, 
um, you know, anything like this, even like a solar wave, you know, where uh, uh, not just a tanning bed, but anything electrical could get affected by this. So um, basically what I recommend is if you have this type of a ballast, uh, the, the easiest and most simple way to uh, protect your investment is just unplug your bed when you're not using it. The tanning bed probably is used a maximum of 20 minutes out of every other day. Uh, not like your refrigerator where it needs to cycle on and off all the time. So rather than uh, beating up your electrical system, just simply unplug your bed when you're not using it. And that would alleviate a lot of the um, problems that may arise when um, having this type of a ballast.